What's going on, y'all? This is Damien with the DevSec Blueprint. And in today's video, what I'm gonna be talking about is the four certifications that I believe a future aspiring DevSecOps engineer should get to jumpstart their career. This list that I've curated is based on my own personal experiences and what I believe you should get if you're trying to pursue um, becoming a DevSecOps engineer. And we're gonna get right into that within the next couple of you know minutes. But before we do any of that, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment on the video once you finish watching it, or even in the middle of the video on what it is that you like to see from this channel. And also, you know, just share your thoughts, your opinions, and your viewpoints and perspectives. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so the first certification that we're gonna talk about is the CompTIA Security Plus. And the key thing about that certification is that number one, it's an entry level certification. And number two, it's actually one of the best certifications to get to understand the core and fundamental cybersecurity concepts. The key thing about it is that those cybersecurity concepts can help you understand the SEC portion of DevSecOps. It was one of the first certifications that I've obtained when I was starting in my cybersecurity career. And I definitely think that the majority of those security concepts stuck with me as I started to progress within my DevSecOps career. So let's talk a little bit more about the skills that you will learn if you were to pursue the CompTIA Security Plus. So the key thing that you wanna understand is that you're gonna learn the general security concepts which includes some of the key cybersecurity terminology and concepts that will provide the individual with the foundation of the security controls that they're gonna test you over, right? You're also gonna learn about threats, vulnerabilities, and mitigations. And you're also gonna learn how to basically respond to common threats within the cybersecurity space or in the industry, the cybersecurity attacks, there's vulnerabilities and even some renowned security incidents that you're gonna learn about as well. You're also gonna learn about security architecture, security operations, and how to apply vulnerability management systems and techniques and so many different other things. And then their last thing is the security program management and oversight, which is pretty much updated, as it says, updated to better reflect the reporting and communication skills required for security plus job roles related to governance, risk management, you know, compliance, and all of those good things. The key thing I want you to understand is that the number of questions will vary and there's a max of 90 questions. There's also a mix of questions such as multiple choice and performance-based and performance-based is essentially testing you on real world scenarios. Like what would you do type situations? The test itself is 90 minutes, and then you have to have a minimum of a 750 to pass this exam, right? And the good thing about this exam is that it's good for three years after you take the exam, but you can attend different conferences and whatnot, like different meetups that give out continuing education credits or units is what they will call it for you to be able to not have to take the cert again but you need about 50 of those in order for you to be able to renew it. And the total cost for this exam is 404 USD or US dollars, which is a pretty hefty price. So the second certification I'm gonna cover is another CompTIA certification, and that is the CompTIA Linux Plus. The key thing about this certification is that it will equip you with the knowledge and skills that you need in order to be able to navigate through the Linux CLI and really understand the Linux distributions and flavors when you're putting them to use for doing any kind of system administration or, you know, modifying networking tables, route tables on a Linux box, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many different things that you're going to be doing as a DevSecOps engineer, but the key thing that you have to understand is that you need to know Linux. And this is a certification that I would implore you to get in order for you to understand Linux. So let's get right into explaining what all skills you'll learn at a very high level or a holistic point of view. So the skills that you will learn by getting this Linux Plus would be system management, which, you know, it says that you configure, manage software, storage, processes, and services. You'll also understand security. 
and the best practices for permission and authentications. You have firewalls and file management. There's scripting, super duper important, containers and automation. And this is where you're going to learn how to create those simple shell scripts and execute those bash scripts, verge control using Git, which is awesome. And various different other orchestration processes, processes. All of this is key. And then there's also troubleshooting, which is also key as well, because there's been plenty of times where I've had to troubleshoot why my Linux server was not working and it was stressful. All right. So exam details. Number of questions that you're going to experience on the exam is similar to the security plus. So the max is going to be 90 questions, the type of questions you can expect multiple choice and performance based. What would you do in X or Y or Z scenario? And then the length of the test is 90 minutes. And in order for you to pass this exam, you need to have a 720 or higher, right? As far as the renewal goes. It's similar to the security plus wherein you only have to re up or recertify every three years, unless of course you get those CEUs or those continuing education credits or units. And what I really want to point out about this specific certification and why it's so good is that there are a plethora of Linux distros and services. And the key thing that CompTIA does really well at with their certifications is that they're very general. There is no, oh, I prefer this type of flavor over the other, or I prefer this type of vendor over the other. Like if you were to pursue a CCNA or something, CompTIA doesn't do that. They cover everything. So if you were to get the network plus, they're going to cover a variety of different routers and switches and so on and so forth. So if you want to get this cert or you want to purchase it, it only costs 369 US dollars or bucks to get it, which is not bad considering the fact that it lasts three years. So the third certification I would recommend would be the AWS Certified Developer Associate. And the thing about this certification is that although you're going to be learning so many different other services and tools that they have to aid you in becoming a better developer mm -hmm. or developing using AWS services, you're really going to learn how to deploy infrastructure using their CloudFormation service. And you're also going to be learning a little bit about their CI CD services that they provide. And those are key as a DevSecOps professional, because you're going to be building those pipelines to be able to deploy secure resources into various different accounts or whatever it is that you're trying to deploy into within AWS. Let's go and let's get right into explaining what exactly this exam is and talk a little bit about it. So there are a couple of things that I really want you to understand or know about this exam. The first thing is that the length of the exam is 130 minutes, right? And the cost of it is 150 USD. And there are about 65 questions or exactly 65 questions. And they're either going to be multiple choice or multiple response slash multiple select, right? So the key thing about this exam that I really want to emphasize is going to be located in the exam guide. And let's just read the introduction of this exam and really understand what the exam is going to validate as far as our knowledge base goes. So the AWS certified developer associate DVA CO2 exam is intended for individuals who perform a developer role and it validates a candidate's ability to demonstrate proficiency in developing, testing, deploying, and debugging AWS cloud-based applications. So the key thing that I really want you guys to understand about this exam is that it includes this part when it comes to validating your knowledge base and that is package and deploy applications by using continuous integration and continuous delivery workflows and services. So this is a very important part of DevSecOps and it's a very important part of this exam. So the last and final cert that I would recommend that you should get is also the CKA or the certified Kubernetes administrator. The key thing about this cert is that it will help you become an avid Kubernetes administrator or user to be able to manage different clusters that are deployed within your environment. And for a DevSecOps professional, it is key. And the reason why is because you're most likely going to be deploying 
applications or containerized applications into a Kubernetes cluster. And you're probably going to need to have some basic knowledge or some base level knowledge on how to be able to manage said cluster. So let's talk a little bit about the certification. So what is the CKA for, right? It says that this certification is for Kubernetes administrators, cloud administrators, and other IT professionals who manage Kubernetes instances. And the key thing is that this certification was created by the Linux Foundation and the Cloud Native Computing Foundation or the CNCF, right? So when you get this exam, what it will basically demonstrate or what you would demonstrate when you become a certified K-8 administrator is that you will be able to do the basic installation as well as configuring and managing production grade Kubernetes clusters. And you'll also get to understand some key concepts like Kubernetes networking, which is nightmarish storage, security, maintenance, logging and monitoring, and so many different other things, right? Which is really good. So you really become a well-versed Kubernetes administrator for a particular cluster. The thing about the exam is that it only costs 395 bucks, which is really, really good. And the key thing about it is that it is valid for three years. The thing about this exam though, is that it is a performance-based exam. And I also understand, or what I do understand about it is that you have a simulator within the exam as well. So you're basically going to be doing some Kubernetes administration or executing commands and configuring a cluster while you're in the exam, which is crazy, but it's really, really good. The exam is two hours. It's performance-based and these are all of the domains and competencies that the exam is going to be uh, scored upon, right? Based on the individual ways for each one of these. And what I really wanted to point out about this exam is that it will be aligned, at least the environment that you're going to be doing the practice exams on with the most recent k 8 minor version. So this exam is constantly being updated at a very rapid pace. So it's definitely ideal for you guys to be practicing and labbing as much as possible when you're pursuing this exam. And that is it. Those are the four certifications that I recommend any future or aspiring DevSecOps professional to obtain. One thing I do want to leave with y'all before I really wrap this video up is certifications are a small piece to the puzzle. What really matters at the end of the day is you labbing every day, you taking your time and building out the projects and including those into your portfolio to showcase your skills so that you can get hired and you can start your DevSecOps career. So with that being stated, please make sure you like, subscribe, and share with your friends if you found this video helpful. Make sure you leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know if you found it valuable and if you recommend any other certification that future DevSecOps professionals should obtain. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for your support. And I cannot wait to see you all in the next video.